Hola amigos, bienvenidos. Yo soy Jim, de Spanish and Go. Wait a minute, something about that didn't sound right. That's why today we're going to talk about the importance of developing an accent in Spanish. La importancia de desarrollar un acento en español. But before we get started, don't forget that we're your resource for learning real-world travel Spanish. So hit that subscribe button for more travel and Spanish tips. Empecemos! Every native Spanish speaker has heard it before. The distinct sound of a gringo speaking Spanish. And you can ask my, it's not always very flattering. Mexico tiene muchos problemas. Now my accent is far from perfect, but today I wanted to talk about three things. One, why you should develop your accent. Two, which country you should model your accent after. And three, how you can start improving your accent today. Okay, first off, why are we even talking about this? Why would you work to develop your accent? After all, it could seem a little disingenuine to just totally copy the way another person talks, right? Well, think about it this way. Have you ever been hanging out with a group of friends and somebody brings a new word to the table? And at first you're thinking, what's this new word? I've never heard it before. Seriously, name a squad with more clout. But before you know it, you're using it too. It's totally natural. Everybody wants to fit in. And that should be your goal with learning a language, at least if you're serious about learning a language. A big goal for me is when I'm speaking Spanish, I don't want anyone to be able to guess where I'm from. Usually, it's pretty easy to guess if somebody is from the United States when they're speaking Spanish. For some reason, we just have this reputation of maybe not being so great at learning languages. So a good goal for me is to just try to convince people that I'm from some other place, hopefully a country that is better known for learning languages. And often when I ask people where they think I might be from when I'm speaking to them in Spanish, they often guess Germany, which is kind of cool for me because that's where my dad's from and where half of my family's from. So uh, that's, a, that's a plus for me, I'm heading down the right road. But a bigger goal would be to try to get people to think that I'm from Mexico. Ambitious goal, I'm definitely not there yet, but aim for the stars, hopefully you land on the moon, right? Also think of any immigrants you've met before who you thought, oh wow, their English is really good. It's probably because they sound a lot like you, or close to the way you sound as a native English speaker. The point is, you just really want to try to blend in as much as possible. Where should you blend in? Well, that brings me to point number two. Which country should you model your accent after? Now, I'm a little biased on this one. I think everybody should learn Mexican Spanish for the most part, but it really depends on your situation. Maybe you really want to live in Spain someday. Maybe you're just fascinated by the architecture and the culture there. In that case, you should learn the Spanish accent. But for most people learning Spanish who maybe don't know where they want to travel to, learning Mexican Spanish is a great option for a few reasons. A third of the world's Spanish-speaking population is from Mexico. So right there, you're going to be widely understood throughout the Spanish-speaking world when you speak Mexican Spanish, or you're familiar with the Mexican accent. If you're new to our channel, you may not know that my wife, Mai, the other half of Spanish and Go, is from Mexico. So it makes a lot of sense for me to try to copy the accent of Mexico. Another reason is Mexican Spanish is usually spoken fairly clearly. There's not a lot of merging of words together. And yeah, it can be really fast. Spanish is one of the fastest languages in the world, but in Mexico, it's fairly clearly spoken. And I can't say that for all Spanish-speaking countries. Mexico and Colombia are known to speak Spanish in a very uh, literal sense, in a very phonetic sense. So they're not cutting off letters at the end of words or at the beginning of words uh, like they do in, in certain Spanish-speaking countries, especially the Caribbean. I really noticed in Puerto Rico, for example, sorry to pick on you, Puerto Rico, but it's a little difficult to understand the Spanish there until you get used to it. They cut off kind of the ends of words sometimes. Mira, nena, tú que tirar eso pa fuera esa está and once you get used to it, sure, it's just, it's just the way they speak in, in the Caribbean, in that region. But it can be a little bit difficult to understand the accent of other Spanish-speaking countries if you start 
apart by trying to copy that accent. But what it really comes down to is if you are dead set on living in or exploring deeply another country where they speak Spanish, you should try to copy that region's accent as much as possible. That way you'll fit in as much as you possibly can once you get there. There are certainly some differences in Mexican Spanish throughout the country, but for the most part, it's easily understood throughout. One thing that I thought sounded kind of funny to me, since I'm used to the accent in Colima, Mexico, where Maya's from, is in the north of Mexico, they pronounce the CH a little differently. It's more like a SH instead of a CH. For example, they'll say Buenas noches instead of Buenas noches. You'll notice the differences like that in many different Spanish-speaking countries. And really what we ultimately want to do on this channel is to show you the variety in the way that Spanish is spoken in different countries. But you're really going to be able to be widely understood if you try to develop the accent of Mexico. But we've traveled through a lot of Mexico, and for the most part nobody gives me any trouble about my accent. Number three, what are some of the ways you can start working to improve your accent today? My first tip here is don't worry about over-exaggerating. It might seem like when you're starting to copy the accent or the sound of uh, the way somebody else speaks that you're overdoing it. In my experience, you're not. You don't want to get too carried away with the R. You can overdrag that, but most of the time, you're probably underdoing it. In my case, my mother-in-law sometimes says, Jim, you're not enunciating the R enough. I thought I was rolling my R's enough, but no, I need to really give it a little extra. And I think a lot of other people could benefit from this tip too. My second tip here is to really listen carefully to the way other people are talking, the people that you're trying to copy. You need to listen like you would a song where you're going to basically sing it back exactly the way the artist you're listening to sang it. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. As a musician, that's the way I like to think about it. Another tip, don't worry too much about how a word is written or looks like you would say it on paper. You just need to listen extremely carefully. Think of it this way. When you're just learning your first language, you didn't read the words off a page and start talking that way. No, you heard your parents talking and little by little, you started repeating what they were saying. You learn the language from listening very carefully to it and repeating. And what happened? Your accent in your first language is perfect. Same thing with Spanish. Listen very carefully to the way people speak and repeat what they say. Copy that. Maybe not out loud at 100% volume. They might think you're a little weird, but that's okay. Under your breath a little bit is going to give you the practice you need to say the words the way you need to say them. Another tip, listen to music in Spanish especially bands that are from the country that you're interested in visiting. Like I mentioned earlier, singing along with a song can really help you get used to saying how an artist sings the words. So you're listening extra carefully when you're listening to a song, and when you're singing it back, you're trying to get as close to the way that the song is being sung. So you're not even worrying too much about the accent so much as sounding like the way the song sounds. Another tip, and I love this one personally, is to practice trabalenguas. Practice tongue twisters in Spanish. We're gonna have a video about this, but what I like to do is memorize the tongue twister and practice it when I'm on a road trip or I'm on my motorcycle. I'll say the thing over and over and over again until it feels natural. Tongue twisters in Spanish are especially difficult, as you might think. At least they are for me. But as you practice them over and over and over again, it'll be second nature and it'll also help get your tongue used to moving to make the sounds that you need to make when speaking Spanish correctly. Thanks for watching guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel and Spanish tips. I hope this video helped you, and let me know in the comments what accent you're practicing, or what accent are you going to practice. I'll chat with you there, and don't forget, el camino es el destino. The journey is the destination. So keep practicing guys, Y nos vemos pronto.